Illustrator video tutorials by Andrew Buckle. In this tutorial I'm just going to show you graphic extras patterns for Illustrator. Now these are swatches for Illustrator and there's a whole range of different designs and I'm just going to use Illustrator CC 2017 as an example but it work, they work for earlier versions 2015 etc as well. Now okay first thing to do you want to actually load them into, of course you don't have to load them into a folder but it makes it probably easier. And that's just going to Illustrator and then Presets. So just go down to the Presets section just below Illustrator CC 2017. See Presets. You might see EN underscore GB or EN underscore US. And, and then you'll see a whole range of other ones. There's Actions, Brushes, etc. But there's also a section for Swatches. And within that, you'll see a whole range of these files, ASE files and Art History, Colour Books. But you can also add your own, and I'm just going to quickly just show you there, graphic extras. Now this is not all of the graphic extras ones, there's like contours, people designs, frame designs, connections, spiral scrolls, a whole range of different swatch files that contain patterns, and they're all in AI format. <coughs> Sorry. And when you've actually added them to this folder, you just, just can add that. With mine, you need actually to add it with permissions, with a privilege. So uh, you might prefer to actually add it to your user account. It's a similar sort of structure, but uh, it's a different place. I've got lots of videos on YouTube showing you how to actually add those files to that folder. Now, once you've actually added to that folder, what you can do is just go back. And now you can just go over here to Swatches. To actually find the Swatches, just go to a Window and Swatches, just down here, Window and Swatches and just drag it over here. Now, they don't initially appear in the swatches. Now, it's just one feature, it just doesn't add them all automatically, it adds them as and when you want them. So, just go over here to the right side and just go down to here, open swatch library, and you'll see the ones I just said earlier, art history, ancient Baroque, etc. a whole range of different. So, what you can do there, and you can see now the graphic extras, and you can see the actual swatches files that I've added frames, spiral scrolls, arrows, etc. There's also an other library. And that's quite useful because if you don't want to add them to a to that presets folder, swatches, you can then just search from browse from and that sometimes is quicker. Personally, that's probably what I find easier to do than actually adding them into that to that. Anyway, once you've actually done that, you can just quickly select any of these designs. So I'm just going to select one or two or three and I'm going to go for say P letter CC. Uh, this is a letter design set, and I've also added one CC one there. Now, you can see them there, and I'm just going to put them into, I've got small, medium, and large. Personally, I wish it would always just default to large. I don't know why it always puts them, defaults them to small. I don't know. Anyway, that's just a feature of how it works. And then you can see all the various, again, I say you can see that they're not added over here in the swatches. Very odd, but... Once you've actually loaded them, what you need to do then is actually select them and just add them like that. Just very quickly, if you want to add them into your swatches. Now, in this case, they're added into the document you've actually got open. That swatches. So basically, all the swatches now you've added there. If you go and open another document, they're not there. Now, that's, well, depends what you want to do. with. Now, once you've actually done that, you've added those, you can also add them when you actually use them, which is probably a better way. But you just you can add them that way. I'm just showing. Now I'm just going to use here just a very simple part. But you can use any path. You can just go. I didn't have to use that. I could use a circle. I could use ellipses, and so on and so on. So you can just actually quickly create. So I just create a quick path there, and you can see the design has been added there. And I can leave that now. I'm just going to drag that out there a little bit. And then, of course, once you've actually got them, you can actually select them there. You can see them added very quick and easy into there, which is great. You can also then, once you've actually got them, and once you've got them into the, because this is a read-only file, so you can just select the designs. And all these are raw T3. They're all for commercial use, so you can use them in a whole range of different projects. So just use them as you want, sort of use them with text. You can... Transfer them also to other applications. You don't have to keep them in Illustrator. So you can actually move them over from Illustrator into Photoshop, After Effects, 
and other applications and even ones outside of Creative Cloud. So you can just move them into like Affinity, Designer, Affinity Photo, whatever. Whatever you want, Critter, another one comes to mind. Now, you can add them like that as fills and I'm just gonna go now to a, a different one. So you've got CC over here. And again, so you can see it's done very small, not very convenient on a very large, so you can see the designs. Now, what you can do, I'm adding them very quickly, just to show you the whole range, of it. but you see what's happening is it's actually cut off. You can't see that, but well, you have to rescale it. And you can actually do that object, transform, and scale. You can do some these as well. You can rotate, you can reflect, you can share, you can move. But I'm gonna go for scale. And there's an option here, transform objects. I don't want that one, because what it does, it makes the size of the path really, really big or small, depending on what you've actually set in the uniform there. Or you can obviously add it non-uniform as well. Now, why would you want that? So I'm just gonna go for 24, 25, I should say. And then another thing with uh, Illustrator, weird feature, is the preview is always off. I have no idea why they always set that. Personally, I would always prefer the preview on, but each their own. Maybe a preference would be nice, but I would always have preview to be on. So you can actually see it. Every time you go in, it always seems to put it back to not being on. So great feature, which I would love to see change. But anyway, uniform, so you can set it down like to 5% or 1%. It's a vector, so it can be any size. So you can make it massive, really make it small, whatever you want to do. Right, so you've actually got that. You can actually see now the design. And of course, once you've actually got that, you can see now I click on these. Now, say you want to load another one in. Now, once you've actually added them to this, this folder, this presets folder, the swatches, you can, what you can do, you can load previous one, and all that does is that goes through all the other swatches. So you can actually quickly go through all the swatches. Now, you can just, so if there's that folder, it will just go through each of them individually. So you can just, and you can go backwards and forwards. Maybe not the most effective. You can still, of course, just go down here and select them like that but you can just use this as well. So you can just go through, and if you, you can of course rename the files. You don't have to keep them as a convention that I've created of GX38 and GX39, whatever. You can obviously, if you want to group all the heart designs or all the letter designs, you can group them at letter, letter, letter one, letter two, letter three, and then you can go through obviously very quickly and easily with this scrolling through. And these ones are the frame designs. Uh, Manga zoom designs, I should say. And again, you can see there, you've got different designs. You just click that one, click that one. And you can see, let's say they're all can be used like that. Right, so you can use them that way. But of course you can use them as, and I'm just gonna remove that. You can actually also use them as a stroke as well. So once you've actually got them there, you can actually go just go over here and I'm gonna make, make that cut solid color. And I'm just gonna make that maybe bigger. 20 or maybe 100 just so you can actually see it and you can see now obviously the design there and you can just go down there and then just apply them that way so you can just see as a stroke now and of course that means you can actually just apply them just here as well so you can just use them as a brush stroke and you can see the designs added that way so just select there and so on and so on and of course you can resize that so you can go like that now you can also use them with type. So just quickly go over there, and I'm gonna say Andrew. Right, very simple, just go there, and then just add them there. And obviously that's been added as a stroke, so just click right there, and go there, and you can see the designs. Yeah. Great, that's another option as well. What else can you do with swatches? Well, as I say, you can export them. That's really quite good. You can put them into Photoshop, apply effects to them. You can, of course, combine them as well. So say you've got a down here rectangle tool, and I'm just gonna go for the very, very basic one. The appearance panel. That's a really great way of adding additional designs. So you can just go fill, and you can just go add new fill, and just add another design on top. So you just go there, design there. So you just see the P there, and of course you can, scale differently. So you can say transform and scale. And again, go back to the transform objects. What you can do, say 30 at that point, you can see you can change that. You've also got various blending modes. You can change the opacity and that's like much more, as well as apply effects as well to it. 
another feature that might perhaps be of interest I'm just gonna you can actually interactively scale as well so you can hold down the graph key that's just near the tilde or tilde whatever you want to call it but anyway it's the gray grave grave whatever you want to call it graph maybe now what you can do hold that down and then hold the rotate so you want to rotate or scale and that's just then interactively see so just do that and that maybe it's quicker than doing it I personally I'm quite happy to go with the transform but you can just do that and rotate them around interactively using that that's one way of doing that and now what more can you do with swatches there's a whole range of different things like I say a whole range of different designs the obvious one after all of that doing the swatches you can save it say drag them over into the libraries as well CC libraries another option is they're just basic paths so you can actually drag the design out just like that and that's the design there Oops. so you can actually see it and it's a standard path so you can actually edit it modify it you can just go over here use color guide change the color and so much more you can also then just save it open to symbols so if you've got window or brushes so symbols bring up the symbols and then just say well I want to use that as a symbol just drag that over there and it can be used as a symbol doesn't have to remain as a swatch so that's a fair run through I think of some of the features I'm certain there's thousands of other things you can do with swatches and you like I say, you can recolor them you can edit them modify them and that's actually one thing I can just before I finish doing this thing I'll show you another couple of sets just go through there and just select one and yeah I'm just gonna go stops yep it's gonna stop this point I can just click there and then just go to the swatches and find it what you can do then is you can say right I want to edit it so you can just double click on there and you can edit into this design so if you say you want to change parts of it you can resize it modify it in numerous ways I'll remove that <coughs> remove that as well and then I'm going to zoom so just there hold down the alt and you can actually duplicate the path so you can then create a whole range save a copy so you can just save another make another quick swatch over which is saved over there so that's they're not like say cast and stone it can be used as brushes it can be used as symbols use as normal paths export the paths use swatches duplicate things sign recolor them and like I say you can recolor them very quickly as well just go over there recolor that design and so much much more I say a whole range of different designs available on the graphic extras website of course there's other swatches available on the web as well many other sites have got things but lots and lots of great designs always adding new sets as well so please come and check them out on the www.graphicextras.com website as well as checking out the YouTube channel. I'm always adding new tutorials about swatches and much more. Thank you much. Thanks. Bye.